as the Holy Spirit began to reveal this to me today, I'm like, wow, this is really amazing. You know, we, we know that, you know, we're being renewed and all of this other stuff and, you know, born again in the Spirit and staying filled with it. But the area and the true depthness of what God is doing is He's taking your specific personality that He created. He created your personality. As Jesus came from the bosom of God, so is your personality. Every one of us has a specific personality. There's nobody else like you. So everybody get it? You're a snowflake. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him, you're the snowflake. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> John chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, And Jesus was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born. Okay, here's another birth, right? Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of a person, but of God. Jesus came into the world for humanity to be reborn into a true reality, developing your personality with the divine characteristics of God. Ooh. Cutting us loose from the uh, slavery of wickedness and cutting us loose from doing their bidding so that we could become offsprings of God Almighty. Again, your personality is being developed. It never stops being developed. You are you, and you will always be you. You, you. Amen? But God is using your personality. He's developing your personality with divine characteristic or character traits from God Almighty. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? Knowledge of God. And of Jesus our Lord. In the knowledge of him. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to this life. And godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Now the knowledge of God are his character traits. Does everybody get it? The knowledge of God, the more you know about him, the more you fellowship with him, there are character traits that are being released. Did you ever notice if you hang around with someone long enough, you become like, like you almost exchange your, your traits, but you still hold your own personality. Amen? Hallelujah. As this divine power is given to us all things. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises and that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. After born again into true reality you are still who you are. Amen? <laughs> Only divine character traits through the knowledge of Christ and his promises, <laughs> you will begin to exchange those things that have developed in your character out of worldly, out of the worldly man, you will become of, out of all worldliness. In other words, you and I were fed, programmed, influenced, 
character traits of darkness, deception, lust, amen, that was affecting and, and developing our character. And God has now taken this new creation and begin to separate those character traits with that same personality to become more and more in his likeness, in his image, in his character, so that we carry a divine nature. Amen? Remember, the things that developed our worldly man personality, God is exchanging now into a divine nature through knowledge of him. Knowledge of him, which is a character. Losing the nature of carnality and the nature of flesh, we're becoming a born-again individual in every area of our life. Why? Because now we are being fed by divine character or characteristic traits of God Almighty. The more that you feed yourself with the characteristic traits of God, the more you change. The more you feed yourself with the characteristics of the natural world it's, and its corruption and so forth and its lies and deceptions and belief systems, the more you become like it. Amen? That's why God says forsake not to assemble, forsake not to fellowship. You know, uh, make sure that you hang around with individuals that are full of faith. Amen? You know, things happen in our lives. Don't get caught up in it. Count it all joy, no matter what. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5, and verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Hello. Why? If you regard someone according to the flesh, oh, they're carrying the characteristics of the flesh. Amen? Okay. For even though we have ha known Christ according to the physical here, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? A new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, how is this going to happen? Well, <laughs> the new creation by cooperating in the developing of your new person, your personality with the divine characteristic traits of God Almighty. That's why Jesus came. Why? So he could leave his characteristic traits, his divine nature. So even after a person is born again, did you ever notice somebody accepts Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, gets filled with the Spirit of God, they do fine for two weeks? And all of a sudden, poof, what the heck? Because their personality has, never, has not had a chance to develop the characteristic traits of Christ. That's why that's a process, isn't it? It's a developing process. Everybody okay? Verse 18, now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciled in the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. That's, a, that's an amazing label. The righteous, that we may become the righteousness of God. You can't look in the mirror and go, man, you're the righteousness of God. Right? You know what I'm saying? That's a tough thing. Because that mirror still reflects the characteristic traits of your old man. Amen? You can put makeup on, dye your hair, change your clothes, gain weight, lose weight. It doesn't matter. The personality is still there. Amen? Personality is still there. Hallelujah. James 4, in verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that were in your what? In your members. Well, you might consider your members your old character traits. 
You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and don't receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend it on your pleasure. Now listen, he, he, he calls it flesh. Those are old character traits. Amen? That you may spend it on your what? On your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That's a, that's a phenomenal statement. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us, who's responsible for converting us and developing our personality through your cooperation, do you think that he yearns jealously yes he does but he gives more grace therefore he says god resists the proud but he gives what grace to the humble the plan more more of his character wars and fights over submission or rebellion you know there's that area where there's true submission or, or there's rebellion one or the other and developing your personality with the divine characteristic traits of God Almighty. So you're, if you're rejecting, you're going to become, re, it's rebellious. Amen? Now you're picking up the character uh, traits of darkness. Or you're going to pick up the character traits of light and become more like Christ. One or the other. What's it doing? It's developing your personality. You are still who you are. But your character, the character traits change you. They change you. Amen? I'll never forget when I got off the plane and Kate didn't, first time she saw me or whatever after I had been born again, she knew I was the same person, but I wasn't the same person. In fact, she poked me and called me an alien. You're an alien. You're different. But it's you, but you're different. Hallelujah. Psalm 51, verse 10. Creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and hold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Create a clean heart. Amen. Why? Because your heart is the core of your desires and the expression of your personality. Your character. Does everybody get it? The Holy Spirit is the helper to develop the new creation of the eternal birth. Developing your personality with a divine character traits into a citizen of the true reality. In 1 Corinthians 13. So everything you're going through, no matter what it is, You have the choice to take the character traits of God or the character traits of the enemy. One will harm you and one will heal you. Does everybody understand that? Glory. Verse 11, please. Let's speak. When I was a child, I what? I don't know. There was when I was a worldly character trait individual. <laughs> when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away foolish things. Wow. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. In other words, he said, when I was of the world, the character traits, I spoke like the world. I thought like the world. 
but as a new creation in Christ with the divine character traits, I have put away the world of lust and deception. Philippians 3, 17. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds, their thoughts, and their desires on earthly things. If they're doing that constantly, is that characteristic traits of Christ or characteristic traits of the world? Amen. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed, conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Our citizenship is the true reality, awaiting the completion of our divine personality to develop with a joining body. With an adjoining body. 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. For this, now when he talks about eternal in heavens, that is the true reality, isn't it? That's all about the true reality. You know, heaven isn't like far away. It's one step out of this realm. Does everybody get it? People always say, oh, it's way too far away. No, there is a place far away, but the heaven, the true reality is one step. It's all it takes. One step and you're in. You cross over, you're in. Verse 2, for in this we what? Grown earnestly, des desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is where? From heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee, what? To assist in the developing of your personality by using the character traits of God Almighty. You see, he's left his character traits all over. Your, the Holy Spirit guides you to all the character traits of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 6, so we are always con confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Earthly house, our earthly housing awaits the exchange for the new housing of your new divine personality that is being developed in this realm. Where is it being developed? In this realm. It doesn't need to be developed in the other realm, does it? In the true reality, it needs to be developed here. This is where Again, this is where we're being qualified. This is where we're, we're found worthy. Not because of the things that we do, but because of the things we cooperate with. Amen? By partaking of the character traits of Christ. And so think about what he said to them. He said, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood is eternal life. Why? Everything he associated was with about his character. 
He, everything that he expressed when he came, he says, look at, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. Everything was expressed about the father. Why? Because he was, he was taking the father's character traits in him. And he was expressing them to us. Even in all the parables and everything else so that we would have an understanding of his nature and of his character so that we could partake those things. Remember, learning these things is knowledge. That's why somebody who gets born again and never reads the Bible, go, never goes to worship, nothing, they're going to stay the same. They'll stay the same. They will never grow. They'll never mature. They'll never advance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Ephesians 4. They don't realize that the Bible is a divine character traits of God Almighty. Everything that these men went through, they were expressing divine character traits of God. How they, how they responded to everything. They were expressing God's character. His character, his character traits. In verse 17, let's speak it. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds, their thoughts, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. Why? Because they're not partaking of the what? Character traits of Christ. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. The blindness of their what? Heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned Christ. Whoa! They have not cooperated with the divine character traits of the divine nature of God Almighty. The eternal knowledge. You have not learned. Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you should what? That you put off concerning your former conduct. The old man, which grows corrupt, it's growing, look at it, it's still growing corrupt. According to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and your thoughts, and that you put on the new creation, the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Again, they did not cooperate with the divine character traits of the divine nature of God Almighty. They couldn't grow. Eternal knowledge from Christ that was, Christ became human, his spirit that lives in us will put on the new creation of the eternal kingdom. Why? Because you are now a citizen of the eternal kingdom. You are now a citizen of the true reality. What quals, qualifies you for that is what Jesus paid the price. But how much you go deep, how much part of that citizenship you are, what's available for you, depends on how much of the character traits of Christ you partake of. Does everybody get it? Colossians 3 and verse 5. Therefore what? Put to death. Oh, yes. Your what? Members. What's your members? Old man character traits. Which are on the earth. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> they're from the world, aren't they? Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is what? Idolatry. He said, kill them. Put them to death. Let them not have any life in them. Activations. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. 
in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. <clears throat> Do not lie to one another, since you've put, on the, put off the old man with its deeds or its character. And have put on the new man who is renewed in the what? Knowledge. What's knowledge? Character traits of God, isn't it? According to the image of him who created him. Where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is in all and in all. Put to death your earthly characteristic traits and put on the new personality or the divine characteristic traits by renewing yourselves in the knowledge of Christ. The knowledge of Christ. The knowledge of Christ. And I'm going to close in Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, that's pretty wild. In other words, every day you're to present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. They're not your own. You were bought with a price. And you're being developed by what? The character, characteristics, uh, characteristic traits of God Almighty. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. Amen? Or reasonable service. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. Well, the only way you're going to renew your thoughts is getting knowledge. Learn from, that's what Jesus was saying. You have not learned Christ. Think of where you were and where you are now. By knowledge. By the guidance of the Holy Spirit. By cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Think how much further we can go. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Refreshing your divine knowledge. The divine presence and developing the divine personality that God has predestined for you to be conformed into his image and likeness. Developing your personality. You, are, you will always be who you are, but you are not who you were. Amen? <laughs> Why? Because you have partaken of the characteristic traits of God Almighty. Feed on his what? Faithfulness. Continue. Every time you worship, there's an exchange being made. Don't let the enemy push you. Be led. If you get angry, the Bible talks about divine anger. There's nothing wrong with being angry. It's what you do with it. Amen? You're going to get offended. You're going to be rejected. Things are going to happen. Why? Because that's just a world of characteristic traits that are trying to influence you and exchange your good traits for bad ones. You know, your heart, is, again, is a core of all desire. The Bible tells us you'll know them by their fruits. Well, how are those fruits manifested? By what partake, what character traits they partake of. Amen? You are what you eat. Amen? <laughs> and you become what you speak. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you, and we ask that your continuous guidance by the Holy Spirit to develop our personality through your divine characteristic traits that we may carry the divine nature and that the world may see you and not us in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.